submerged in the icy darkness of a narrow underwater cave. Three friends were eager to test their limits and ventured into one of the most dangerous diving sites on the planet. But what started off as an exciting underwater quest quickly spiraled into their worst nightmare. In this video, we're uncovering the chilling events of the Eagle's Nest tragedy and the mistakes that led to two untimely deaths. Eagle's Nest, known as the Mount Everest of cave diving, is a deep sinkhole with both upstream and downstream tunnels. It's an almost perfectly circular pool nestled in a low-lying swampy area. Divers descend through a narrow tubular chimney, squeezing through limestone just long enough to hold your body. At 70 feet, the walls suddenly drop away into an abyss of blackness. Reaching 130 feet, you land atop a massive debris cone in a cavern the size of an aircraft hangar. Its stunning beauty and challenging structure draw divers from around the world, eager to explore its mysterious depths and test their skills against its treacherous tunnels. And on Saturday, October 15, 2016, Chris Rittenmeyer, Patrick Peacock, and their friend Justin Blakely embarked on a daring dive into the Eagle's Nest sinkhole. Located within the Chassahowitzka Wildlife Management Area in Hernando County, Florida. The two seasoned cave divers, Chris and Patrick, led their friend into the depths, eager to explore the mysterious underwater cavern lying far beneath the surface. They descended 50 feet or 15 meters to reach the cave system's entrance, a gateway to a labyrinth stretching over a mile or 1.6 kilometers and plunging to depths beyond 300 feet or 91 meters teeming with diverse marine life. Despite locals' warnings and efforts to shut down the cave due to its hazardous nature, the trio pushed forward. They ignored caution signs along the wooded path and a chilling Grim Reaper sign at the cave's underwater entrance. Fully aware of the dangers and well-prepared, the experienced divers ventured into the dark abyss, unknowingly setting the stage for a terrifying nightmare. The day before their ill-fated dive, Rittenmeyer and Peacock took precautions by setting up a series of bailout bottles along the cave's tunnels. These backup cylinders were placed at 20 feet, 70 feet, and 120 feet depths, each containing gas mixes tailored for specific depths, including varying concentrations of oxygen, nitrogen, and sometimes helium. Eagle's Nest's tunnels are vast and complex, with three main tunnel systems and over six dozen rooms, making it easy to become disoriented. The divers first navigated the upstream tunnel, stopping at Crevice Cave before entering Randy's room, known for its multicolored clay walls. They then reached the Super Room, the largest chamber in Eagle's Nest, but even that wasn't enough, and seeking a more challenging dive, Rittenmeyer and Peacock headed towards the downstream tunnel. Given Blakely's relative inexperience and the cave's dangerous reputation, he chose to stay closer to the surface. Before diving into the unknown, they set a rendezvous point near the surface, a safety net if things went south. They agreed to regroup there at 3 p.m. after their dive. Despite their vast experience, their skills were about to be tested like never before. Equipped with high-tech underwater scooters, a backup scooter, and advanced closed-circuit rebreathers, also called CCRs, they were ready. Unlike regular systems that release bubbles, CCRs recycle exhaled gas, filtering out carbon dioxide and maintaining safe oxygen levels, allowing for longer dives and clearer visibility. Little did they know their equipment and expertise would be pushed to the absolute limit. As they navigated the downstream tunnel, they checked their diving computers for the current depth and time. It was now 2 p.m., giving them only an hour before they were supposed to meet Blakely at the rendezvous point. With just an hour to spare, they planned to explore John's pocket, then move on to Jim's room, the Half Moon Room, and finally, the Room of Dreams at the tunnel's end. The clock was ticking, and the tension was rising as they ventured deeper into the cave. Before they could continue, they had to navigate one of the narrowest and deepest parts of the cave system, a passageway known as the Pit, plunging to a depth of 310 feet or 94 meters. This section, one of the deepest in any underwater cave in the U.S., is notorious for its low visibility and complex pathways. Rittenmeyer and Peacock reached the treacherous passage 43 minutes after diving in. At around 260 feet or 79 meters, they started squeezing through the tight space, one after the other. Three minutes later, they had to turn back, unable to proceed. 
They floated outside the entrance for six minutes, likely planning their next move. Then they gave it another shot. This time, one of them squeezed through while the other couldn't. The diver who made it turned around and re-entered from the other side, trying to find his partner. Suddenly, disaster struck. Peacock started frantically removing his diving gear, and Rittenmeyer lost his headlight, plunging him into darkness. With no backup lights, Rittenmeyer was left blind in the depths. Peacock, now almost entirely without equipment, was left with just his mask, suit, and fins. The situation escalated from challenging to life-threatening in mere moments. At 61 minutes into their dive, one of the divers made a desperate decision. He abandoned his fully functional rebreather and a complete personal bailout bottle. Despite still having oxygen in his rebreather, his diluent bottle, which mixes gas to dilute the oxygen, is empty. Panicked, he turns to his inflation bottle for emergency air. But this bottle is designed for buoyancy control and isn't safe to breathe from at such depths. As the clock ticks and their rendezvous time approaches, Blakely starts heading to the meeting point. And as the clock strikes 3 p.m., Peacock and Rittenmeyer are nowhere to be seen. After waiting for several minutes, Blakely swims to the surface, only to dive back down to check again. He repeats this process over and over, hour after hour. By 6 p.m., three hours past their meeting time, Blakely calls 911, reporting his missing dive partners. As the Hernando County Sheriff's Office picks up the call, they're stunned by the location of the emergency call. Rescuers scramble through miles of rugged terrain in the Chesahowitzka Wildlife Management Area, using only four-wheel drive vehicles to reach the site. The situation is dire, and the clock is ticking as the rescue mission begins. As night sets in, the rescue team spots Justin Blakely, alone and anxious, clinging to his diving gear at the surface. The first brave souls to plunge into the murky abyss are John Burno and Charlie Rubberson, a Navy veteran and a world record-holding diver. With hearts pounding, they dive into the upstream tunnel, desperately searching for any signs of their friends, but all they find are untouched bailout bottles, adding to the chilling uncertainty. By 3.30 a.m., Bernot and Roberson surfaced, having scoured both the upstream and Lockwood tunnels without success. The rescue mission kicked into high gear as a second team, featuring Olympic gold medalist diver Ted McCoy and firefighter paramedic A.J. Gonzalez plunged into the water at 3.45 a.m. Their target, the downstream tunnel, the last unexplored area. Almost immediately, McCoy and Gonzalez stumbled upon the tragic scene. Patrick Peacock and Chris Rittenmeyer's bodies floating near each other on the exit side of the pit. This grim discovery confirmed their deaths. According to Florida law, the site was now a crime scene. McCoy and Gonzalez spent 45 minutes carefully documenting and analyzing the scene before surfacing. As dawn breaks, the area around Eagle's Nest is swarmed by news crews, and the challenge of recovering the bodies while managing media chaos begins. Authorities are left grappling for answers. The recovery operation is grueling and fraught with danger, but eventually, both Rittenmeyer and Peacock are pulled from the sinkhole. Pronounced dead at the scene, their bodies are transported to the Hernando County Coroner's Office. The mystery surrounding their deaths is far from solved, and what the authorities uncover will only deepen the enigma of their tragic end. As the medical examiners dig deep into the cause of death, rescue divers head back into the eerie depths of Eagle's Nest sinkhole diving into the dark, foreboding pit. Their mission? To find any missing gear that might explain the horrific turn of events. Each dive puts them face to face with the same dangers that led to Patrick Peacock and Chris Rittenmeyer's tragic end. But, these brave souls push through the peril, recovering every piece of discarded equipment scattered across the cave floor. Experts examined each item with a fine-toothed comb, searching for any sign of malfunction. What they found was both surprising and unsettling. Every piece of gear was in perfect working condition. Desperate to crack the case, investigators turned to scuba guru Ken Salat for answers. But despite his thorough analysis, the mystery remains unsolved. As the story set diving forums ablaze with speculation and debates, the question remains, how did two top-notch divers, with all their gear in working order and following every safety protocol, end up dead in the treacherous depths of Eagle's Nest. Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this story interesting, click here for another interesting story. 
and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and until next time.